Greetings, agents. The anomaly we'll be examining today sheds light on the SCP Foundation's methods and the consequences they're willing to bear in their unwavering obedience to these protocols. Item number SCP-1913 Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class 2 Lamb Risk Class 5 Critical Assigned Site Site 45 Site Director Dr. Harold Frott Research Head Assigned Task Force Convoy Omega Dash 8 aka The Gats in the Cradle Special Containment Procedures Revision 7 April 4th, 19 Convoy Omega-8 aka The Catch in the Cradle has been formed to handle the containment, research, and transfer of SCP-1913-1 and the avoidance and cleanup of SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3 attacks. SCP-1913-1 is to be kept in a lead case, equipped with a single speaker, to aid in interrogation. SCP-1913-1 is not to be allowed outside of its box, unless confined to a windowless room, and is not to know its location. Convoy Omega-8 is to maintain constant movement across underpopulated areas of America, and be prepared for engagement of both SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3. Brief stops between sites for fuel, food, and equipment repairs are permitted. Personnel are to wear latex gloves while directly handling SCP-1913-1 and are to avoid skin contact at all times. If unprotected physical contact is made, staff are to immediately wash their hands of any ink-like substance. If strains begin to spread, the affected staff are to be terminated before symptoms occur. Containment of SCP-1913-1 is to be considered a priority until improved containment procedures can be developed. SCP-1913-1 must not be given to SCP-1913-2 or SCP-1913-3 under any circumstances. SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3 have yet to be contained. Authorization has been given for any and all measures deemed necessary to neutralize SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3. Revision 8 April 12, 19 All SCP-1913 instances are to be contained at least 1,800 kilometers away from each other, in areas where the Foundation has established major sites. For specific locations of each SCP-1913 instance, refer to document 1913-53. Each SCP-1913 instance is to be placed in the middle of a tubular glass ring with a radius of 4 meters. The inside of the glass ring is to be filled with sulfur dust. Personnel are to wear latex gloves while handling SCP-1913-1 and are to avoid skin contact at all times. If unprotected physical contact is made, the staff are to immediately wash their hands of any ink-like substance. If stains begin to spread, the affected staff are to be terminated before symptoms occur. Injuries caused by SCP-1913-2 may require termination if they cannot be healed. Staff must remove any visible armor or lab coat before entering SCP-1913-2's cell to prevent aggravation. SCP-1913-3's cell is to be blast and fireproof. Entry into SCP-1913-3's ring is not permitted. Description SCP-1913 is the collective term of three separate entities, designated SCP-1913-1, SCP-1913-2, and SCP-1913-3. SCP-1913 instances do not show signs of mortality, either regenerating fatal injuries over time, or reappearing near the place of their death when its body has been destroyed within an hour. All SCP-1913 instances have shown an extreme aversion to sulfur, being either unwilling or unable to touch or cross over it without assistance. SCP-1913-1 is a sapient ceramic statue depicting a cat, measuring 20.5 cm in height 
and weighing 8.3 kilograms. SCP-1913-1 has the name Agatha, H on the bottom, and is decorated with white gloss paint on the nose, ears, and forehead, and a black, wet ink-black substance around the object's eyes, mouth, and paws. SCP-1913-1 is capable of communication, emanating a young female voice from its interior. SCP-1913-1 has shown disdain towards Foundation personnel, but is cooperative when threatened through the shaking of its container. SCP-1913-1 has given considerable information regarding other SCP-1913 instances' abilities and reasons for pursuit, but has been known to withhold information or give false statements relevant to its own containment, such as it not detailing its detestation towards sulfur. The ink covering SCP-1913-1's eyes, mouth, and paws is composed of 50.9% water, 48% dash, 0.9% salt, and 0.2% silver. Upon contact with a living subject's epidermis, the substance will be absorbed by the subject's pores. Depending on the quantity of the ink, the affected areas will rapidly begin to dissolve and eventually disappear. The subject does not seem to die from this process until the entire body has been dissolved, despite the disappearance of vital organs. If the torso has been consumed, but the subject's limbs remain, the limbs will continue to function until completely dissolved, usually attempting to move across the floor and grab nearby objects or legs. SCP-1913-1's ink does not appear to be capable of spreading onto objects, cadavers, dead tissue, such as hair or fingernails, or those who have not touched SCP-1913-1 in the past 8 hours, and is only capable of causing the disappearance of living tissue. Unless contact is made with the subject's bloodstream, washing off the substance around the affected areas is sufficient to prevent its effects, though scaring may occur. SCP-1913-1's ink is harmless when diluted with water. SCP-1913-2 is an animate humanoid skeleton covered in dark hair and ash, which gives it the physical shape of a female humanoid. SCP-1913-2 skeleton is human in structure, with the exception of its skull and digits, which appear to belong to a large canine. SCP-1913-2 is capable of moving at speeds of up to 65 km per hour, despite lacking the tissues required for motility. SCP-1913-2 does not appear to be sapient, and appears to act almost entirely on the orders given to it by either SCP-1913-1 or SCP-1913-3. It is presumed that SCP-1913-3 has stopped SCP-1913-2 to attack anyone wearing either a lab coat or the standard armor commonly worn by Convoy Omega-8, formerly known as the Calcinder Cradle, on site prior to the event 1913 3 due to the specific nature of these triggers. Otherwise, unless provoked or provided with an insufficient amount of food, SCP-1913-2 is unexpectedly docile. SCP-1913-2 will attack its victims when provoked, typically through clawing at the victim. However, despite major organ damage and blood loss, SCP-1913-2 is not capable of killing a victim. Subjects will show continued life signs until sustaining fatal injuries from another source, including non-anomalous wounds and the effects of SCP-1913-1 sink. If an organ or limb has been separated from the subject, then that organ will continue to live independently from the subject. Subjects will not die if an organ separated from its body via SCP-1913-2 dies. SCP-1913-2 will continue attacking a victim until either the victim ceases moving, typically from shock, or another subject provokes it. Although SCP-1913-2 does not require substance for survival, it has shown a proclivity toward eating the meat of its victims and will become agitated if food is not provided. SCP-1913-3 refers to SCP-1913-2 as Telly. SCP-1913-3 appears to be an adolescent, male black Labrador Retriever, Canis lupus familiaris, lacking a mouth, nose and eyes. 
SCP-1913-3's face consists of several ragged holes, mimicking a grinning visage, which reveals a dim white light. SCP-1913-3 is sipping and refers to itself as Freddy. SCP-1913-3 refuses to elaborate on its reasons for its pursuit of SCP-1913-1 beyond family matters, but it has been reported that SCP-1913-3 does not want to harm SCP-1913-1. Information from SCP-1913-1 suggests a physical change in SCP-1913-1's form, but has not been confirmed. When SCP-1913-3 collides with an object or subject, SCP-1913-3 will emit a burst of great color flames from the holes in its face. Flames produced in this manner reach temperatures of up to 1200 degrees Celsius, approximately 2192 degrees Fahrenheit, and have the expected effect upon coming into contact with non-living objects. Fire started due to contact with these flames will continue to burn until a subject's skin has been fully consumed, or until the fire has been put out. Subjects will suffer severe burns from exposure to SCP-1913-3, typically resulting in complete loss of sight, hearing and touch. The termination attempts of the victims of SCP-1913-3 have only been successful when the victims have been dissolved by the ink of SCP-1913-1. Unless blocked by a significant amount of sulfur, SCP-1913-3 is able to determine the general location of other SCP-1913 instances. SCP-1913-3 periodically experiences mood swings, ranging from neutral to aggressive, often cursing containment personnel. SCP-1913-3 has been responsible for at least two major fires following the 24th of March, 19. SCP-1913-1 Recovery On March 24, 19, SCP-1913-1 was discovered at the harbor upon investigation of a local shipwreck. Agent Crowley discovered SCP-1913-1 in the wreckage of the which was believed to have been in transit to New York City, but was instead en route to Two bodies were found in the wreckage, but the remaining 20 Passages were missing. After learning of the properties of SCP-1913-1, two lifeboats loaded with 20 cadavers were planted in waters to drown off groups of interests. Cadavers were D-class personnel who have died during testing. Due to the ship's state of disrepair prior to voyage, the sinking of the was proclaimed to have been caused by its mechanical condition. Encounter 001 Report Upon SCP-1913-1's arrival at site on April 2nd, 19, SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3 attacked the site, causing emergency evacuation protocols to be activated. SCP-1913-2 repeatedly threw SCP-1913-3 at the escape vehicle carrying SCP-1913-1 which caused considerable damage to the vehicle before escaping. SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3's exclusive interest in SCP-1913-1 led to the formation of Convoy Omega-8 and the collective designation of the three entities. Encounter 015 Report An additional attempt to capture either SCP-1913-2 or SCP-1913-3 has failed. SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3 have yet to cease pursuit of Convoy Omega-8. SCP-1913-2's constant movement, apparent knowledge of Foundation vehicles, and SCP-1913-3's constant explosive nature has made containment of the entity difficult. Tranquilizer darts, blast of water, fire, and gunfire have been utilized, but have yet to subdue either entity. Encounter 029 Report SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3 followed an attacked Convoy Omega-8 while it was receiving supplies at Site-41-8. Convoy Omega-8 requests backup, but was incapacitated before arrival. Dr. Hayward and Agent Crowley attempt to proceed to the roof to await evacuation with SCP-1913-1, 
but were led into research lab, where Agent Crowley prevented the SCP-913-3's acquisition of SCP-913-1, while preventing Dr. Hayward's termination. For more information, see Interview 913-8. SCP-913 has been reclassified as Euclid. Interview 913-8 Interviewed Agent Sarah Crowley Interviewer Dr. Andrew Ducky Begin Log Can I say something for the record? Oh, go ahead. It was a mistake to put Dr. Hayward up with the cats in the cradle. The kid's right, but he's too green. He just got out of school. He hardly even knows the difference between mind-altering effects and infrahazards. He didn't do anything wrong, but if he just... I apologize. I like the kid, and I'm obviously biased, but he could have been more prepared if he was assigned to a safer group first. Experience these things instead of getting some lecture about it. <sighs> Sorry, I needed to get that off my chest. It's fine. You wanted to ask me about Encounter 29, right? Please? Right. We only needed basic supplies. Food and fuel. We weren't expecting to spend more than a few minutes at 45. But we were all kinds of jumpy. We hadn't seen the dog or the girl for days, so we were expecting something from them. Hayward and I were holding Dash 1 to the side's garage, and sure enough, the car exploded behind us. They must have been following us, waiting till we got to another side to attack, because they seemed to have attacked us immediately after the 12 of us got out. And this is when you alerted Chat 45 and attempted to reach the roof for evac? Yes, either that or let them do god knows what with it. Didn't matter much though, because we ended up in some poor bastard's lap, with those two banging down the door. Thu started throwing itself at the door, till Dash 3 told it to move over before it blew the door off, which set off the sprinkles. That... thing... tree... just walked right up to me. Didn't do anything. Didn't attack, didn't explode, didn't have the girl attack and have it explode. It just sat there. Only thing I could think to say was, why? It's been a long time since I felt so powerless. It told me that it was doing this as a service, that its flame was redemption. It said that they can't see, can't hear, can't feel. They're just left with themselves, see no evil and all that. What happened to Dr. Hayward? The idiot threw a microscope at it. Didn't matter much. Dashree knocked him into the counter afterward. It was steamed. Clearly. Hayward got burned, but he was soaked too, prevented him from burning too bad. I don't know why, but three told two to kill him for it. Maybe it thought the kid was beneath it, or figured that two would do a better job. Ended up picking the kid up and throwing him to the far wall, crashing into these jars of sulfur before... Well, before Dash 2 reached through his chest. Dash 2 was about to charge him, but it stopped. Three seemed to get angry at two, till it took a look at the rocks covering Highward. I put two and two together, and assumed that the rocks were what was spooking them. So I did what I could. It felt good. Seeing those things actually running from us for a change. Hey, is that all? I'm hoping to see some people at the infirmary before visiting hours close. You said to remind you that you wanted to share a concern about the SCP-1913 entities as a whole. What was it? Ah, yeah. Hayward was going to report it at Site 45. He's been interrogating Dash 1 for a while, and got something out of it. He's had his suspicions about how SCP-913 functions, and felt that there was something more to it than what we knew. Didn't tell me, but it seemed urgent. Thought it was worth bringing it up. Listen, I'd tell you if I knew it, but all I really know is that I lived to see those things stir out Hayward's heart, and so did he. In log. Closing statement. Dr. Highward was released from intensive care one month after this interview, recovering from third degree burns over his arms and torso, and the cauterization of a hole through his chest. Mentions of the release 
or creation of a foreign entity if SCP-1913-2 or SCP-1913-3 reaches SCP-1913-1. In addition to a physical change in SCP-1913-1, has been discussed with Dr. Highward and was confirmed by SCP-1913-1, but denied by SCP-1913-3. Document 1913-53 SCP-1913-1 Site 45C Las Vegas Floor 7 Secure Holding Cell Number 703 SCP-1913-2 Site Orlando, Florida Floor Secure Holding Cell Number SCP-1913-3 Site New York City Floor Secure Holding Cell Number and Law A successful mission for the Foundation Their research and sacrifices lead to the containment of three anomalous entities or so they'd like to believe The truth is that pure chance was the only factor that saved the Foundation's agents Due to civilian casualties, property damage and resource expenditure justified the Foundation's continued gambling wouldn't it have been simpler to dedicate those resources to the swift elimination of the threat? Help us continue exposing the SCP Foundation's shortcomings with your comments and suggestions below. I am Virus Tisonimo, we are the GOC, and you have been informed.